Okay, um, so let's look at what will be the lecture objectives. Uh, we will begin with some introduction to the course. Then we will move um, to study how digital signal processing compares with its analog signal processing counterpart. And we also look at the advantages and disadvantages between the two types of processing. Then we will uh, look at the concept of frequency in discrete time. Basically, we are familiar with the concept of frequency in continuous time, which where we measure the frequency in hertz or cycles per second. But here in discrete time or digital signal processing, the concept of frequency is slightly different. So we will be covering that too. And time permitting, we will also look at the properties of periodicity and the frequency range. But that depends on whether we get time in this lecture or uh, we will cover that in the next uh, lecture. Okay, so the, the topic of, of the course title is Digital Signal Processing, which basically is three words, digital, signal, and processing. So it makes a lot of sense if we individually look at what these words mean, and I'm sure you, you know what these are in, in a broader uh, terms. So digital, is the opposite of um, analog or continuous. So unlike a flow of water, which is continuous in nature, digital is more like days on a calendar, or uh, you can say the, the brick format, whereas there is one brick and then followed by another brick and the third brick and so on. So digital is, is means in steps or more specifically it is expressed as a discrete set of values. Most uh, commonly it is represented in a binary format which is zero and one. Uh, we will look at uh, the digital in more detail uh, at, at a later stage. So let's move on to the next, uh, which is signal. Signal, I'm sure you all know, it's a function of time, space, or any other independent variable and carries information. This is the important part that a signal will carry information. We can see that traffic lights are also called signals. So that is the reason because these are the gestures which are uh, providing you with some information. So that's why they are called signals. But similarly, we use thumbs up gesture as a um, signal, which means effectively as okay, or everything is all right. So we know a signal is something carrying information. Similarly, a signal in which there is an information or rather I would say a signal where there is no information or the information is lost is called a noise. So the difference between a signal and a noise is the information. The signal will be carrying information whereas the noise will either have no information or there will be no way to extract the information. So anyway, for the sake of this course, Signals will be in the form of numeric representations or numbers. So they, they may be temperature signals, they may be voltage, or they may be earthquake signals or your health signals. But in this course, we will be representing those signals in a number format. Okay, so processing is a series of actions or processes undertaken in an organized manner to achieve certain objectives. So for example, like a food processor is something which processes raw form of food of vegetables or fruits into a more furnished form. 
or juice or extracts. Similarly, here we will be processing digital signals for a variety of reasons. Okay, at this stage, I would recommend that um, you should also refer to this Wikipedia article of digital signal processing. It's not a very long article, but when you go through it, it gives you a broader perspective of what this field is all about. So very quickly, what is digital signal processing? Digital signal processing is the use of digital processing, such as uh, through computers uh, or any other means to perform a wide variety of signal processing operations. And I'm, I'm sure with the discussion uh, which went through uh, in the previous slide, this definition should be very clear and self-explanatory to all of you. Now, there can be several reasons for performing DSP tasks. So some of them could be that we are interested in extracting information from a signal. So we receive a signal and we want to extract the information embedded in there. Or we want to create a signal which carries some information. Maybe we want to send it to a friend through a phone or a, or a device, or we want to send it to a rover or an autonomous vehicle. So this can be a reason or simply to change or modify the type of the signal. So we, we got a signal in some form and we, we said that, okay, this signal is not the right, not in the right form to be communicated elsewhere. So we want, we may want to change the shape of the signal. So these can be some of the reasons why we would like to perform DSP operations. Now this is very interesting because we are studying DSP within an electrical engineering domain. So um, it's important to understand where digital signal processing sits within an electrical engineering uh, discipline. We know that electrical engineering is a field of engineering dealing with applications of electricity, electronics, and electromagnetism. And the field itself has now very um, diversified and that includes electronics, digital computers, powers, um, telecommunications, controls, radio frequency engineering, signal processing, AI, instrumentation, microprocessors, microelectronics, and and these all of these fields and, and several fields not included in this list, they involve DSP in terms of what? Data acquisition, that is, you want to capture data. Analysis, you want to process the data. You want to extract information. You want to see what information is in there. You want to monitor something. You want to control something. You want to make decisions based on that data, like we do in machine learning or AI. You want to visualize that data in, in um, more effective manners, like, for example, infographics or dashboards. And you might want to communicate to other uh, individuals or other machines or other systems that information. So whatever you want to do as listed here, the DSP tasks will uh, come through, will be needed. For example, take an example uh, of a home. We are interested in measuring the quality of electricity being delivered in our homes. Then obviously we would need some sensor or a measuring device to capture voltage, current, and frequency, for example, as parameters. Then we will need a computing device, such as microprocessor or a microcontroller, to run some mathematics on that data. And lastly, we would, we would want the resulting information to be stored as well as visualized on a dashboard or on your phone apps. You may want to run some AI on that data as well. To do all this effectively, knowing the DSP 
and its contents will be essential. So I'm sure you can see how this example can be extended to other domains, for example, healthcare, medical diagnostics, earthquake engineering, or autonomous cars, drones, banking, stock markets, and many machine learning and AI operations, robotics, for example. So DSV allows us to develop our skill sets for extremely diverse applications. So DSP is a, is a, is a tool set which allows you to make a lot of uh, applications uh, in a variety of disciplines. Now very quickly, uh, these are a brief course contents which we will be covering in this course and we have colored it into three different domains. So there are three parts. Part A is about signals. Part B will be about frequency. So there are possibilities of looking at the signals and the systems from a frequency domain perspective. So the color green represent that domain. And lastly, we will look at the systems needed to process these signals in time and frequency domains. So we will be covering the filter designs and other related topic in the part C, which is colored in yellow.